Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I've got some emulation news for you. We're talking about Xbox 360, Nintendo 3DS, and PlayStation 2. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about our favorite Xbox 360 emulator on PC. That would be Xenia, or I guess Xenia, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Now, previously to download Xenia, you'd have to go to xenia.jp download. Once you're here, you'd click on Master. If you wanted to pick up a development version, an experimental version of Xenia, you'd have to click on System Requirements here and then scroll down to where it says Canary and then click on that. Now you may have already known this, but now you can go directly to GitHub here to pick up the latest version of Xenia. There are two different GitHubs, one for the mainline and one for the experimental version. I'll leave a link to both in the description below. And taking a look at the GitHub here, the latest update was yesterday to the main version. It has been very active lately. In fact, it has been getting updates almost every single day recently, actually multiple updates a day. So this is something you'll probably want to pay attention to. Next up here, we're moving on to Nintendo 3DS talking about Citra, but Citra MMJ, which is one of the more popular forks of Citra. It has just recently been updated again. It was inactive for a while and all of a sudden out of the blue here, it just started receiving update after update. So between August and well this month, there was absolutely nothing and since then we've got a bunch. Now if we take a look at the GitHub here, there is no difference in change logs, so not all of the changes have been documented very well. Now fortunately here on the creator's website, they do list what exactly was added and they say DLC loading issue was fixed. So if you were running into DLC loading issues with your latest build, you might want to pick up this one. Just like always, I'll leave a link in the description below. And there are two different versions here. One is just the standard MMJ and the other one is the scope storage. So if you have games on a micro SD card, you might want to check out the storage access version. Last up here, we're talking about our favorite PS2 emulator on Android, Eater SX2 and LaunchBox, which has also just recently come back for Android. A lot of people have been asking when LaunchBox is going to get official support for Eater SX2. And I might have some bad news for you here. Now in a previous video, I showed a workaround on how to kind of get Eater SX2 up and running with LaunchBox. It was a temporary solution and from my understanding here, LaunchBox was working on a full-time permanent solution. However, that was until recently. So Unbroken Software here who creates LaunchBox commented on that video. They said, thanks for the coverage, Mr. Sujano. We've been working hard to support Eater SX2, but unfortunately we talked with Talrith, the Eater SX2 developer tonight, and he has no interest in supporting front ends at all. He ended the conversation with, I might just make the activities private next update, suggesting that he is gonna completely disable any chance of front ends launching games at all. So for now, we have to give up on supporting Eater SX2. We might have more details if you need them. On one hand here, this is a pretty big bummer. I'm a massive fan of LaunchBox. I love their PC product. I love Big Box. And on Android here, the product keeps getting better. If you want a great way to organize your retro games, LaunchBox is probably the way to go. So it's unfortunate that Eater SX2 won't be supported on the Android version. But on the other hand here, we wouldn't have good PS2 emulation on Android if it wasn't for Talrith. Now Talrith did get the blessing from the entire PCSX2 team. This app was built the right way. It works well, it's free, it's open to anyone who wants to use it. Nothing's hidden behind paywalls, there's nothing shady about this app. Talrith has invested a ton of hours to develop it to where it is today and it's a one-man development team. So as much as some people might say, hey, make it available for LaunchBox, hey, make a RetroArch core of Eater SX2, I think with all of the work that Talrith has put into this project, they have full control of what they wanna do. And I am okay with that. At these early stages of good PS2 emulation on Android, we're kind of at Talrith's mercy. If they got tired of developing the emulator or if something ever happened to them, we'd be kind of screwed here. I'm just happy for what we have in the first place and. You know what, I'm cool with whatever they want to do. But anyways, that is all I've got for this one. Short, sweet, and to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything I talked about today, whether it be Xenia or Xenia, Citra MMJ, LaunchBox, or Eater SX2. Let me know in the comments below. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.